The Rise of Worse is Better by Richard P. Gabriel of Lucid Incorporated. This feels like, are we going to get lisped? Do you like the coloring of this article? What the hell is this? Okay, I think, I think this one's better. <laughs> what do you guys want? Some light turd brown or pea yellow? Uh, I think I'm going to go with turd brown. It's just easier on the uh, <laughs> easier on the old eyes. The rise of worse is better. I and just about every designer of common lisp and cloth has had extreme exposure to the MIT Stanford style of design. The essence of this style can be captured by the phrase, the right thing. To such a designer, it is important to get all of the following characteristics right. Simplicity. The design must be simple, both in implementation and interface. It is more important for the interface to be simple than the implementation. This is actually a really good statement. This is a great statement. It is be I stream on Windows, and when I receive a Slack message from my boss, it makes that sound. Flip, can you take the previous board out? Can you take the I don't want people to know I use Windows, okay? Because if they know I use Windows, you know how many stupid comments I'm going to get in the YouTube section, Flip, if you don't take this out? It's going to be like, oh, he uses Windows. He won't dye his hair blue. Oh, he uses Windows. Where's the blue mustache, Prime Gen? Hey, Prime Gen, when are you going to dye your hair blue? Hey, oh, well, you use Windows. What a rookie. I use Arch, by the way. The design must not be inconsistent. I should probably just say it the other way. Uh, a design is allowed to be slightly less simple and less complete to avoid inconsistency. Consistency is as important as correctness. Okay, I, I can buy that. Completeness. A design must uh, cover as many important situations as is practical. All reasonable uh, accepted cases uh, must be covered. Simplicity is not allowed to uh, overly reduce completeness. Okay, these are actually really... Okay, so this is probably the greatest definition I've ever seen for things you should consider when writing a library, right? This is like the best advice I've, I've heard of for writing a library. I love this. I love this. I believe most people would agree that these are good characteristics. Yeah, I will call this use, uh, I will call the use of this philosophy of the design, the MIT approach, common lisp with Klaus and the scheme represent the MIT approach to design and implementation. The worse is better philosophy is only slightly different. Simplicity, oh, interesting. Okay, it's like, uh, it has the exact same, it has the exact same names in the same order but different the design must be simple both in implementation and interface it is important for the implementation to be simple uh to be simple than the interface simplicity is the most important consideration in a design hmm. correctness the design must be correct in all observable aspects it is slightly better to be simple than correct consistency the design must not be overly inconsistent consistency can be sacrificed for simplicity in some cases but it is better to drop those parts of the design that deal with less common circumstances than to introduce either implementational complexity or inconsistency. Completeness. The design must cover as many important situations as is practical. All reasonable ex uh, expected cases should be covered. Completeness can be sacrificed in favor of other quality. In fact, completeness must be sacrificed whenever, whenever implementation simplicity is jeopardized. Consistency can be a sacrifice to achieve completeness if the uh, simplicity is retained, especially worthless Let's see, especially worthless is consistency of interface. The worse is better philosophy. I wonder where he's getting this philosophy from, right? Because in some aspects, I see some modern web design in this one. But I also see a lot of modern web design in this one. Hmm. Earlier, Unix and C examples of the use of this school of design. And I will call those use of this design strategy the New Jersey approach. F f New Jersey kids. It's always them New Jersey kids. You know, it's always Ken Wheeler. That, that f Ken Wheeler. <laughs> I have intentionally uh, caricatured the worse is better philosophy to convince you that it is obviously a bad philosophy and that the New, the New Jersey approach is a bad approach. <laughs> Ken Wheeler. Uh, however, I believe that worse is better, even in its straw man form, has a better survival characteristics than the right thing, and that the New Jersey approach, when used for software, is better approach than the MIT approach. Okay, this, this, this has gotten interesting. Okay, okay. Let me start off by retelling a story that shows that the MIT slash New Jersey distinction is a valid and the proponents of each philosophy actually believe their philosophy is better. Two famous people, the one MIT and the other one from Berkeley, F and Berkeley sockets, but, but working on Unix, once met to discuss operating system issues. The person from MIT was knowledgeable about uh, uh, its. ITS, uh, the MIT AI lab operating system, and had been reading the uh, reading the Unix sources. He was interested in how Unix solved the PC lo uh, losering problem. 
The PC losering problem occurs when a user program uh, invokes a system routine to perform a lengthy operation that might have significant state, such as I.O. buffers. If an interrupt occurs during the operation, the state of the user program must be saved. Losering. What a loser. Get in, loser. We're going losering. It's because the invocation of the system routine is usually a single instruction. The PC of the user program... The program counter, I assume, is what they mean by this, uh, of the user program does not adequately capture the state of the process. The system routine uh, must either back out or press forward. The right thing is to back out and restore the user program uh, program PC to the instruction that was invoked, uh, the system routine, so that the resumption of the user program after the interrupt, for example, re-enters the system subroutine. It is called PC losering because the PC is being coerced into loser mode, where loser is the affectionate name for a user at MIT. Okay. Okay, losers, let's go to MIT. Get it, loser, we're going to MIT. The MIT guy did not see any code that handled this case and asked the New Jersey guy how to, the problem was handled. The New Jersey guy said that the Unix folks were aware of the problem, but the solution was for the operating uh, for the system routine to always finish. But sometimes an error code would be returned that signaled that the system routine had failed to complete its action. A correct user program then had to check the error code to determine whether to simply try the system routine again. The MIT guy did not like the solution because it was not the right thing. The New Jersey guy said that the Unix solution was right because the design philosophy of Unix was simplicity and that the right thing was too complex. Besides, programmers could easily insert this extra test and loop. The MIT guy pointed out that the implementation was simple, but the interface to the functionality was complex. The New Jersey guy said that the right trade-off had been selected in Unix. Namely, implementation simplicity was more important than interface simplicity. I think I see now. I understand more. Arch user versus not arch user. <laughs> the MIT guy then muttered that sometimes it takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. But the New Jersey guy didn't understand. I'm not sure I do either. <laughs> I think I'm going to use... I'm going to try to use this in everyday talk and see what people say. What? This article is riddled with platitudes. Uh, I think I see what they're trying to say here. Now, I want to argue that worse is better is better. C is a programming language designed for writing Unix, and it was designed using the New Jersey approach. C is therefore a language which is easy to write a decent compiler and required, requires the programmer to write text that is easy for the compiler to interpret. Some have called C a fancy assembly language. Both earlier Unix and C compilers had simple structures, are easy to port, require a few machine resources to run, and provide about 50 to 80% of what you want from an operating system and programming language. Fair. Half of the computers, I mean, audio working is not one of them that ever works on any machine I've ever used in my lifetime. Half of the computers uh, that exist at any point are worse than median, smaller or slower. Unix and C work fine on them. The worse is better philosophy means that implementation simplicity has the highest priority, which means Unix and C are easy to port on such machines. Therefore, one expects as if, let's see, that if the 50% functionality Unix and C supports is satisfactory, they will start to appear everywhere. And they have. Haven't they? Unix and C are the ultimate computer viruses. <laughs> I mean, you know, a further benefit of the worse is better philosophy is that programmers, uh, a programmer is conditioned to sacrifice some safety, convenience, and hassle to get good performance and modest resource use. Programs written using the New Jersey approach will work, uh, were, will work well both in small machines and large ones, and the code will be portable because it's written on top of a virus. <laughs> This is the saltiest Lisp programmer I have ever read in my entire lifetime. Uh, it is important to remember that the initial virus has, be, uh, has to be basically good. If so, the viral spread is assured as long as it is portable. Once the virus has spread, there will be pressure to improve it, possibly by increasing its functionality closer to 90%, but users have already been conditioned to accept worse than the right thing. Therefore, the worse is better software first will gain acceptance, second will condition its users to expect less, and third will improve to the point that it is almost the right thing. In concrete terms, even though Lisp compilers in 1987 were about as good as C compilers, there are many more compiler experts who want to make C compilers better than to make C uh, the Lisp compilers... <laughs> This is a great this is a great statement by the way. Everything that was just said right here, this was a great statement, okay? This is great. The good news is that in 1995 we will have a good operating system and programming language. The bad news is they'll still be uh they'll still be Unix and C++. 
what foresight this guy has. This is great. Uh, this will. Uh, this is. Uh, there is a final benefit to the worse is better because a New Jersey language and system are not really powerful enough to build complex monolith software. Large system must be designed to reuse components. Therefore, a traditional a tradition of integration springs up. How does the, uh, the right thing stack up? There are two basic scenarios: the big complex system scenario and the diamond like jewel scenario. Did this guy predict microservices? This article is from 1991. 1991. And he's over here just giving us facts about our day to day. What the hell's happening here? Dude, okay. You know how sometimes people say, you know, the previous generation was better and that the modern generation lacks blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, okay. In this case, they might be right because this is incredible. The big complex system scenario goes like this. First, the right thing needs to be designed. Then its implementation needs to be designed. Finally, it is implemented. Because it is the right thing, it is nearly 100% of the desired functionality and implementation simplicity was never a concern, so it takes a long time to implement. Yeah, this is waterfall and why waterfall is always really, really hard. It is large and complex. It requires complex tools to use properly. The last 20% takes 80% of the effort, and the right thing takes a long time to get out, and it only runs satisfactory on most sophisticated hardware. This is an incredibly great statement and is yes the diamond like a jewel scenario goes like this the right thing takes forever to design but it is quite small at every point uh, along the way to implement it to run fast is either impossible or beyond the capabilities of most implementers two scenarios correspond to common lisp and scheme the first scenario is also the scenario for classic artificial intelligence software the right thing is frequently a monolithic piece of software but for no reason other than that the right thing is often designed monolithically that is the characteristic is happen a happenstance the lesson to be learned from this is that often undesirable to go for the right thing first. It is better to get half of the right thing available so that it spreads like a virus. Once people are hooked on it, it takes time to improve to the 90% of the right thing. I mean, honestly, this is like an incredible statement. Man, invent he clearly predicted, I mean, he he's predicted React. He's predicted Zig. He's predicted Rust. He's predicted like everything. Like this is how it works. A wrong lesson is to take uh, the parable literally and conclude that C is the right uh, is the right vehicle for AI software. The 50% solution has to be basically right, and in this case, it isn't. But one can conclude that the Lisp community needs to seriously rethink its position on Lisp design. And I'll say more about this later. Why is OCaml coming back? OCaml is in a great spot. OCaml is really in a good spot. People are starting to desire more functional programming languages. It's becoming a very mainstream thought to think more functional. And JavaScript is just not a functional language. I know we want it to be. It has all the appearances of being functional, but it's just a garbage fire underneath the hood. And Rust has all the appearances of being functional while maintaining extremely high brows, dislikes the common person, and has a borrow checker that sometimes becomes really frustrating, but ultimately writes really nice software. So OCaml is like this weird middle ground where it is functional, it feels like Rust in some aspects, and it's even getting things about Rust, like uh, lifetimes, but they're really, really simple lifetimes. They cause really, really simple items, and it actually just is, is it's shockingly good. So I think OCaml is truly making the greatest resurgence because it is one of the more... It, it somehow meets all the things, and I want to dive significantly deeper into it, but we'll see what happens. The name is maybe the worse is better because it's kind of like a virus agent.